new ores in the depths below. And thus, let's add custom ore generation to Minecraft. Playing Minecraft is awesome. Playing with mods is even better, but the best is playing with mods and friends. Official partner of the channel, Bisect Hosting, has you covered. With its easy-to-use panel, you can effortlessly install over 2,000 different mod packs with one click of a button. But it gets even better if you use my link in the description below and use the code COUNTJOY at checkout. As a new customer, you will get an additional 25% off your first month. So check out Bisect Hosting for a smooth gaming experience and your server hosting needs. Visit bisecthosting.com slash and use the code COUNTJO at checkout for 25% off your first month. All right, we find ourselves back in the channel more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom ore generation to a Minecraft. Yes, finally, a fan favorite over here, of course, and highly anticipated tutorial for custom ore generation. Now, there's a couple of things that are quite important, and that is for custom ore generation, you will need data gen. That is the way that we're going to set this up. Now, what you can do is you can take a look at the JSON files that are going to be generated and basically change them manually. They are all available in the GitHub repository. So both the code as well as the generated JSON files are available. However, I just highly, highly, highly recommend you do it the way that I show you because otherwise it's going to be very complicated very fast. Now, for world generation in the tutorial mode package, we're going to create the world gen package over here, and we will need four classes for this. So this is going to be the mod configured features class. We will also need the mod place features class. We will then need the mod biome modifiers class over here. And last, but certainly not least, the mod or placement class. I'm going to start with the mod configured features. Now, a configured feature is basically a, a feature that you can configure with certain variables. Now, in our case, we're going to use an or feature with an or configuration. That is the general idea. That's going to basically be saying, hey, spawn these ores and this can be replaced by those ores and in this size. So for our purposes, first of all, we need two helper methods, which I will copy over. You can basically get those in the GitHub repository. They are fairly straightforward. As you can see here, we're basically creating a resource key while here we're registering something with a bootstrap context for some reason it's not called bootstrap context i believe that this is a typo somewhere in the Minecraft code or something i don't know but there you go that is basically the two methods that we need and then we need three different resource keys so those are going to be public static final resource key of type configured feature of type question mark comma question mark and this is going to be the overworld underscore sapphire underscore or underscore key equal to the register key method, passing in the sapphire underscore or right here as the name. So this is going to be the resource key for our sapphire or. And then we're going to duplicate this twice. And this is then going to be the nether sapphire or. And here as well, of course, nether underscore sapphire underscore or. And here is going to be end sapphire or and here end sapphire or as well. So those three resource keys are very important and we do need all of them. We're then going to make a public static void bootstrap method. I'm going to call bootstrap. The parameter is the bootstrap context. You can see it's not bootstrap, bootstrap for some reason. Of type configured feature of type question mark, question mark. I'm going to call this the context over here. And then we can get to registering. But before we register, we actually need a couple of other things. So when you spawn an ore, basically the idea is that you have a certain rule test. And this determines, hey, you can replace these blocks with this custom ore. That's how basically it works, right? The entire world spawns. And then it's going to say, okay, now we want some ores over here. So basically our deep slate ore can only replace deep slate and the deep slate ore replaceable blocks. For this, we're going to make some rule tests over here. So they're going to be a rule test. I'm going to call this the stone replaceables equal to a new tag match test of type block tags dot stone or replaceables. All blocks in this tag are then going to be replaceable once we sort of the target replacing. So in our case, right, all of the stone replaceables, those would be like, this is of course going to be stone, but there's also things like diorite and granite and stuff like that would also be in there. But we also need a couple of other rule tests that we need, of course, need the deep slate replaceables equal to a new tag match test of block tags dot deep slate or replaceables. We also want a rule test of netherrack replaceables equal to a new block match test of blocks.netherrack. And then last but certainly not least, rule test for end replaceables equal to a new block match test again, this time of blocks 
dot endstone and there we go so this is going to basically show you the vanilla ones as well as netherrack and endstone now for the overworld we'll actually need a list here in this case a list of or configuration dot target block state this is going to be our overworld sapphire ors which is going to be equal to a list dot of or configuration dot target passing in stone replaceables and then the second parameter is going to be mod blocks dot sapphire or dot get dot get default state after the second closing parenthesis, comma, or configuration dot target deep slate replaceables, comma, mod blocks dot deep slate sapphire or dot get dot get default state. Because in the overworld, of course, right, both the sapphire or as well as the deep slate sapphire or can spawn. However, the sapphire or should only replace stone replaceables, but the deep slate sapphire or can, of course, replace the deep slate replaceables. That's the idea. The other ones we can actually do in line. So for the overworld one, we want to call the register method right here, passing in the context, passing in the key. So this would be the overworld sapphire or key, then feature dot or because this is an or feature and then the actual configuration, which is going to be a new or configuration, passing in the overworld sapphire or list right here, as well as the size. The size right here is, by the way, the vein size. So this is the size of the veins that spawn inside of the world. And for the other ones, we once again want to call the register method with the context over here and then the nether sapphire or key feature dot or and then a new or configuration. First of all, passing in the replaceables and then the second parameter is going to be the nether or dot get here in this case dot get default state and you still want a size. So there you go. That's the idea. And you can duplicate this for the end as well, making sure that you change the key right here. That's very important. Changing the key changing the rule test, and then changing what spawns here, which is the endstone sapphire ore. All of the code, as always, of course, is available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository, so you can take a look at that as well. But with that, we have basically created the mod configured feature. So this is going to be the configured feature for what we need for both the overworld as well as the nether as well as at the end. And we can proceed to the mod players features class. Now here, once again, we're going to need two helper methods that I'm going to copy over. They are pretty much almost the same thing that we have seen in the mod configured features. In this case, just it registers a resource key for the place feature here in this case. And we need three more resource keys. So that's going to be a public static final resource key of placed feature here and this is the sapphire underscore or underscore place underscore key equal to registered key and we're going to call this the sapphire underscore or underscore placed i do like to add the place over here in the name of the key for your place features i just use that as a convention we can duplicate this twice and also add the nether over here and of course, don't forget to change the name. They all have to have unique names. If they if they clash, then you will get an error and it's not going to work. So do double check that. And there you go. Our three resource keys done. And for this, we then also need a public static void bootstrap method over here with a bootstrap context of placed feature. I want to call this the context over here. And the first thing that we're actually going to need here is a very strange thing. And that is a holder getter of type configured feature of type question mark comma question mark we're going to call this the configured features equal to context dot lookup dot registries dot configured features now why do we need this insanity well the reason why we need it is we need to somehow reference the configured features that we've created right here but there's no real way to get them instead of getting this like holder getter basically where we where we can easily look them up via the resource key and that's why we need the resource key right here and the resource keys here we will also need in a second but before we can continue with the mod place features we need a couple of methods in the mod or placement class over here those are just helper methods i'll be copying them over in this case they are the or placement common or placement and rare or placement they are actually copied over from a vanilla class which is the or placement class right here. But you can see those methods are private and I just copy them over basically. That is, in my opinion, the easiest way to basically do this. They just make it way easier to specify the placement of your ors. So let's continue over here in the bootstrap method. We want to call the register method, passing in the context, then passing in the sapphire or placed key, then calling configured features dot get or throw, passing in mod configured features dot overall sapphire or key after the first closing parenthesis we can then call the mod or placement dot let's do the common or placement with a count of 12 and then a height range placement dot uniform 
with a vertical anchor dot absolute of minus 64 and then a vertical anchor absolute of 80, let's say. We can end this with a semicolon and there you go. Now, what does all of this insanity mean? Well, 12 means the number of veins per chunk that are going to spawn. And then the height range placement here, in this case uniform, means that it's going to spawn uniformly. So the veins are going to spawn uniformly from Y level minus 64 all the way to plus 80 in the Y level. I highly recommend you just use the absolute. That's the easiest way. That's basically the exact Y level. You can also use the triangle, which will make it that the likelihood of a vein spawning at negative 64 and 80 is the lowest, and it gets basically progressively higher in the likelihood in the middle of those two, which would be where exactly like 24 or something like that, Y level 24. So highly recommended to basically just play around with the height range placement over here. There's a tons of things to do. Highly recommend also to take a look at the vanilla classes and how they do it. That is basically always a good idea. And then we can duplicate this twice here and then changing it to the Nether Sapphire key here. And of course, very important, the Nether Sapphire or here as well in the mod configured features. And then here the end placed key and here the end Sapphire or key. So those will basically then be both the mod configured as well as the mod placed features done. And that is usually the two things that we need to do world gen. However, in Forge, we need something that's called a biome modifier. Now, luckily, we can actually also generate those fairly easily with data gen. That is why this is such a cool thing. For this, once again, we need the resource key. And that's going to be a resource key of biome modifiers. And we'll proceed with this. So we're going to need a public static final resource key of type biome modifier over here. It's going to be the at underscore sapphire underscore or equal to the register key method. I'm going to call this add sapphire or here. There you go. You can duplicate this twice. And of course, changing the name, make sure to change the name and both of them at the end or and the nether or as well. There you go. So those are going to be the two that we need right here. And we also need the public static void bootstrap method with the boot stab context of a biome modifier. I want to call this the context right here. And let's see for this, we're going to need the place feature. So they're going to be a var of placed features equal to context dot lookup. And we're going to look up the registries dot place feature here in this case, as we need the to reference the place features in our biome modifier to actually add those. We're also going to need another var, and that is going to be the biomes here in this case, because we also want to reference some biomes, context.lookup, and then pass in registries.biome here in this case. And then we can actually register our biome modifiers. For this, we want to say context.register, passing in the sapphire or key right here, the biome modifier resource key, comma, a new forge biome modifiers. And then we want to choose the add features biome modifier, as we want to add a feature to a certain biome. The biome we want to add this to, we can define via the biome. So biomes.get or throw. And then in this case, I'm going to choose biome tags that is overworld. Because in this case, right, our sapphire or I want to spawn this in the entire overworld. If you want a different one, you can basically just do biome tags and you can choose different biome tags over here. Or if you want to specify a specific biome, you can do biomes choosing net micro world level biome over here and then choosing, for example, you know, the beach here, and then that should also work. What I recommend in our example, we're going to just going to choose the overworld comma. The second parameter here is a holder set dot direct pass passing in place features dot get or throw mod place features dot sapphire or placed after the second closing parenthesis generation step underground ors. And then we can end all of this with a semicolon and no errors should be present. Highly recommended to take a look at this in the GitHub repository as well if there are any errors on your end. But that is the whole idea. This is basically going to generate the bio modifier and we're going to duplicate this twice for the nether as well as the end over here. So add nether sapphire or now here in the biome is nether. Of course, mod place features nether sapphire or and the generation step stays the same. And the last one is in adding the end sapphire or in, of course, is underscore end. Very important. Then here, end sapphire or place key. And once again, the underground ores stays the same. And with that, we have everything that we need. So those are going to be the three big world gen classes, which when you also add things like the tree generation, which we're going to add in the next couple of tutorials or other things that you might want to spawn inside of the world, we're always going to need a configured feature, a place feature, as well as a biome modifier. And those are then used in the data gen over here in a new class. So in the data gen, we're going to create the new class called the mod world 
gen provider. This will extend the data pack builder entries provider. Hover over this create constructor matching super. This is correct. However, the last one we're going to delete here and just make a set dot of, and this is going to be tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then after the registries, we also want to pass in the builder, which right now doesn't exist yet because this is what we have to define. There's going to be a public static final registry set builder here called builder. This is going to be equal to a new registry set builder dot add. And we're going to add registries dot configured feature and then mod configured features colon colon bootstrap. I did write this wrong. So there you go. They're going to rename this to bootstrap. There you go. Add another one. And that's going to be the registries dot place feature and then mod place features colon colon bootstrap and last but certainly not least forge registries dot keys dot bio modifiers mod bio modifiers colon colon bootstrap ending with a semicolon and there you go we can then go to our data generators here and at the very end generators dot add provider event dot include server please there you go new mod world gen provider passing in pack output, as well as the lookup provider. And there you go. All of a sudden, we have everything that we're going to need. And this is going to generate our three configured features, JSON files, our three placed feature, JSON files, as well as our three biome modifiers, JSON files as well. So let's go to the run data over here. And in theory, those should be generated. And then you will understand why, while this is a quite involved process, having this set up once makes it really easy to add more things in the future. And if you see the different JSON files that it generates, those are going to be under data. And then tutorial mod, forge, those are going to be your biome modifiers. So those are going to be the things that are actually going to add things to biomes. So let's say, for example, the sapphire, or you can see we're looking for the biome of is overworld. We're spawning the sapphire or placed feature, and it's going to be under the step of underground ores. Absolutely awesome. Now in the world gen over here, so tutorial mod world gen data folder, we have the configured features, which is going to be the ore over here, as you can see, right? We're basically looking for a target. And the target here are the stone ore replaceables. And we're going to replace those with the sapphire ore or if we have deep slate or replaceables and find those, then we're going to replace those with the deep slate or sapphire or in this case. And you can see the other ones work as well. And when it comes to the place feature, the same things happen that we have basically defined, right? A uniform height range distribution over here from minus 64 to 80 and a count of 12. The rest here, the in square and the type biome, those are all handled via the or placement right here, that basically is a default of Minecraft. And there you go. Those are going to be the different JSON files. Now, like I said, you can also make those manually, right? You just need a place feature, configure feature, and the bio modifiers JSON files. And then it's going to work completely without code. However, I highly recommend against it. The risk of making a typo in one of those JSON files is quite high. So I do recommend basically using the data gen route. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. Of course, that's up to you. But that is basically the way that I recommend it. But with that done, we can now join into the game, make a new world and see if our custom ores spawn inside of it. Let's take a look. All right, finds us back in Minecraft and let's take a look over here. Let's just descend down and we can see there we freaking go. We already find some deep slate over here with our custom ore and let's take a look maybe we can find some normal one as well absolutely so there's a couple of normal ones here as well absolutely freaking fantastic let's take a look at the nether as well all right we're in the nether and sometimes i did find it to be quite rare in the nether even if you have your different numbers high up you also have to take a look at which y level you are because ours only spawn until y level 80 so we do actually need to go down a little bit in order to find them but when you do that, there you go. You will find them in no time. So that is the nether ore as well. So let's last but certainly not least also take a look at the end. All right, we find ourselves in the end and you can already see some of it spawning right here. And there's, of course, way more below as well. So it's going to spawn basically everywhere in the main island. And it should also spawn in any of the other islands as long as it is basically in the correct Y level. So, you know, between minus 64 and 80. But you can, of course, also change that in the code. But that is how easy it is to add some custom ore generation to Minecraft. And that is it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll be creating a custom tree. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.